It's been a busy few months in which I was finally able to migrate our entire application to AWS away from our current cloud provider. And I'm proud to say we were able to do this migration without any major disruptions for our customers. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how it went. In this video, I wanted to take an in-depth look at how we did this migration. There's a lot to talk about, so let's dive in. Initially, we just had a single server that had the application and the database on it, in addition to the worker, scheduler and Redis cache. However, as we grew, the single point of failure had to be taken care of. So we split the application from the database server like this. We turned our initial server into a database server and we introduced an application server. We also added the worker and the scheduler on this application server. Then, before switching over the DNS records, we added a load balancer so we could scale out the application horizontally in the future without worrying about DNS. In this process, we also migrated our DNS to Cloudflare and enabled the proxy. Over time, we added a separate Redis cache server and multiple application servers. Next, we introduced our real-time WebSocket server using Laravel Echo and it connected to the same Redis instance as our application because we set up Redis as a broadcast driver. In this entire process, our first application server kept being a bit special in the sense it also had a scheduler and a database queue workers on it. Unfortunately, our current server provider had been plagued with reliability issues, so earlier this year I decided to migrate our entire database to AWS. I have an entire video on that topic, so be sure to check that one out. The impact it had on our infrastructure was as follows. We deprecated our self-managed database server and migrated it to AWS RDS. And in this process, we also added a reach replica for extra reliability and performance. This is a pretty beefy machine and can handle our load great. And the biggest benefit to me is that it is a managed database, so I don't have to bother with applying security patches manually anymore. And this was our infrastructure up until a few months ago. The database migration was our first step in our migration away from our current infrastructure provider. Over the past few months, I've been creating an entirely new infrastructure from the ground up using AWS Fargate at the core. Let's take a look. At the core, we have an ECS Fargate cluster with three services. Our web service handles web traffic, our worker service handles the task scheduler and Laravel Horizon, and then we have our WebSocket service, which still runs Laravel Echo Server. Both the worker and the web service share the exact same Docker image and simply have a different boot configuration. The web service starts FPM, Nginx, etc., while the worker starts Horizon and has a cron task. Our WebSocket service is built using an entirely separate Laravel Echo Docker image. Containerization was one of the biggest challenges because our application was not containerized at all. Previously, when we deployed, we just SSH'd into the application servers, pull the code and be done with it. I was able to postpone containerizing our application for long enough and I finally had to cave so our ECS Fargit services could benefit from things like autoscaling. In hindsight, the containerization process was not too bad. But as a Docker noob, this was quite challenging in the beginning. In order to make deploying more efficient, we created a base PHP image that contains all the extensions for our Laravel app to work. And on deploy, we build our actual application image that Fargate is able to use for the services. The downside of this is that the deploy time increased from two to three minutes to around five minutes, which is a compromise I had to make. We also finally created a GitHub action that is able to deploy our application. And we have a separate GitHub action for deploying our WebSocket service because that doesn't update too often. In another video, I might dive into the entire Docker setup, but for now, let's focus on the infrastructure. On top of our ECS cluster, we have an application load balancer taking care of routing requests to our ECS Fargate services. And we distinguish two types of requests. Wildcard requests hit the web service, meaning our web shops, the management panel, and the API. And the WebSocket requests hit our WebSocket service. This entire infrastructure is managed in code using Terraform, which makes it pretty easy to manage the separate components and tie them together. All right, at this point, we're running two separate instances of our application. We have the live application running on our current server provider. And on the other side, we have our ECS cluster up and running. Now it's time to start the migration process. The first component I wanted to migrate was the WebSocket. 
Whenever our live Laravel app broadcasts an event, it ends up in Redis and Redis in turn notifies the Laravel echo server, which in turn will notify all the clients who are connected and are interested in said event, for example, the order placed event. And the same thing happens from our new Laravel application on ECS, except the events end up in the other instance of echo server, which does not have any clients connected to it. Looking at the schematic, you immediately see there is no connection between the two running applications, which is an issue. Initially, we explored sharing a Redis instance for broadcasting purposes, but Redis is a bit special in that sense that it's not recommended to expose it to the internet, and Elasticache simply does not allow it, period. Lucky for us, a Laravel echo server has a way to expose an HTTP API. So instead of broadcasting through Redis, we can broadcast by doing an HTTP POST request to the Laravel Echo API. And for this purpose, we created a custom HTTP Laravel broadcast driver. And broadcasting still also needs to happen to the original Laravel Echo server, because here's the thing, once a client connects to a WebSocket server, it doesn't reconnect on every message. It keeps a persistent TCP connection open. That means that if we were to change the DNS record to point to the new server, clients won't magically follow it. So in an effort not to cause any impact, we broadcast the event twice in anticipation of our DNS record change. So once we flip the DNS records, clients are also able to connect to the new Laravel Echo Server instance on ECS. And at this point, we were at the mercy of DNS propagation, as you can see in this graph that illustrates the active connections to the legacy WebSocket server after the DNS change. After we were sure the DNS propagated everywhere, we had to have a way to force the remaining clients to reconnect to the new server. Lucky for us, this was actually super simple to do. We could just turn off the legacy WebSocket server and all of our clients still connected to that one were forced into a reconnect flow, which comes for free with Laravel Echo Client. And this forced them to do a new DNS lookup and eventually connect to the new WebSocket service on ECS. This migration went super smooth and not a single customer experienced impact here. Unfortunately, during a routine maintenance event on ECS, our WebSocket service failed to restart and caused downtime that went unnoticed for about half a day. And the reason for this was actually entirely my fault. We didn't monitor our WebSocket endpoints. Rookie mistake, lessons learned. The actual reason why ECS was not able to restart the service was because the container registry pruned the WebSocket image. I did not create a separate registry for the WebSocket images and because we deploy the application often, the WebSocket image got pruned. Lessons learned, don't be lazy and just create that separate registry for the WebSocket images. Luckily, the impact was very minimal because all of our clients have a fallback to polling when they can't connect to the WebSocket server. All right, now that we have our WebSockets on ECS, let's move on to the actual application. Migrating the application was a different beast entirely because we experienced high volume and our merchants expect us to be highly available during those peak moments. Now, luckily, we didn't have to migrate everything in one go. If we take a look at the wildcard domain, this actually contains all the web shops, our API endpoints that are point of sales and our kiosk use, and our management interface. We chose to migrate the management interface first, because if something were to go wrong here, it's not too critical, as long as the web shops and the point of sales kept working. We had to make a few application level adjustments before we could simply switch the DNS record over. For example, we stored a few things exclusively in Redis. This was a very bad decision at the time, I know, but now we had to deal with it. We made sure that our application would stop abusing the cache driver and start using it as intended. Namely, a cache driver and not a persistent store. After we made these few adjustments, it was time to switch over the DNS records of the management interface and this actually all went fine. There was zero impact and our merchants did not even notice a single thing. The ECS service was able to handle things pretty well because it was massively over-provisioned initially. We then started tuning the task CPU and memory allocations and we tweaked the autoscaler so when there was high load it would scale up automatically. Finally, we also made sure the task scheduler was migrated and Horizon was started as well. We didn't use Horizon on the old infrastructure because we used the database driver, so that actually worked out in our favor because jobs dispatched on the old infrastructure would still be processed over there and jobs processed on the new ECS infrastructure would be picked up by Horizon. 
Once we were comfortable with the way the service behaved and auto-scaled, we started migrating the API over, which went very smooth as well. And then came the web shops. I didn't want to migrate them over in a big bang, so I developed a nice script that allowed me to create DNS records in Cloudflare for a subset of merchants. Every Monday for a few weeks I migrated over a percentage of webshops until there were no more left and I was able to update our wildcard DNS record in Cloudflare. This also went by without any issue, so overall I'm very happy with how things went and we can finally say we are freed from our previous infrastructure provider. We configured autoscaling on ECS using a set of alarms. For example, when the CPU or memory hit a consistent 70%, which is pretty conservative, we will add in a new task. And this happens for every service. So if our worker suddenly gets flooded with jobs, it will scale. If our traffic spikes, our web service will scale. And if we hit our WebSocket limits, the WebSocket service will scale. And this happens automatically, freeing me from having to worry about infrastructure, which is great. But the thing is, our traffic pattern is very predictable. We have a spike at lunch and dinner, and it's more aggressive on Fridays and on weekends. During the night, we virtually have zero traffic. So in addition to auto-scaling, I created a Laravel command that is able to proactively scale our application by updating the minimum capacity required in ECS. This works in addition to auto-scaling and allows me to fine-tune the control I have over the infrastructure. I scheduled this command a few times. At night, the minimum capacity scales down to one to save costs. During the day, we scale to a minimum of three tasks for peak performance. And on Fridays in the afternoon, we will scale up to six tasks to prepare for the high load. And this really works great and will allow the infrastructure to be better prepared for load during the day. And that concludes the video. The past few months have been quite the adventure and I learned a lot while migrating my project to ECS and containerizing it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.